You ever play Widow but get frustrated because it feels like you just can't hit enough shots to carry? You see in Overwatch League or on streams, these Widows that can consistently carry fight after fight, getting three plus kills every single time. You wanna be able to do that too, so you play Widow in your games, but you seemingly miss Anas that are just standing still. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to do in order to go from a Widow that has no skill at all and can't carry anybody even in very low ranks to someone that pops off consistently and even gets called a hacker in this comprehensive Widow advanced guide. If you've been waiting for the perfect opportunity to take your Overwatch gameplay to the next level, then I have the perfect deal for you. Gameleap.com is now 50% off. You heard me right, 50% off in the links down below. Don't miss out on this rare chance to surpass your peaks and limits in Overwatch and I hope to see you there. So the first major question that everyone asks when they want to learn Widow is, how do I carry on Widow? And the answer is actually way simpler than it might seem, and it's not as difficult as it might seem either. The simple answer is, you need to be able to hit the easy shots semi-consistently. Now, what do I mean by the easy shots in your games? Enemies that are not moving in fixed movements or enemies that are not actively dodging you. Enemies that are jumping because they're in fixed positions. Enemies that are standing still focusing on something completely different or trying to challenge you. And then enemies that are not actively dodging you because they're focused on something else. These three things have something in common. The movement aspect is mostly irrelevant and the pressure aspect on yourself is also mostly irrelevant as well. But I'm gonna get to that a little bit later. Now, if you can hit these easy shots consistently in game, you can carry yourself all the way up to Grandmaster. I guarantee it. But I'm actually getting a little bit too far ahead of myself. I need to answer first the question commonly asked, why can't I hit a shot even the easy shots? Now, there's four things that you need to understand about hitting shots on Widow. It's movement, pressure, application, and then consistency. So the thing that you need to understand first and foremost is that when you're moving or when an enemy is moving, it is incredibly difficult for you to directly hit them because of how movement is in Overwatch. There is no movement delay like in a game like CS or Valorant. Movement is instantaneous, crouching is instantaneous, and it's the same way for you. Movement plays a huge overwhelming role in Widowmaker, and I'm gonna get to more of that in a little bit, but for now, understand that movement is something that you need to understand and control if you wanna be able to hit shots consistently. Now, pressure is another thing that can prevent you from hitting shots. Sure, it might be easy to hit headshots all day against bots who can't shoot you back, but when a McCree only has to hit three body shots to kill you from a decent range, the pressure amps up. And up against more lethal targets or even dive targets, the pressure will amp up even more so. So you gotta understand that pressure plays a huge role in that, and that's why simply being able to hit headshots in training rooms or against bots is never going to be enough to perform an actual game. The next step is the application aspect, and this is taking movement and pressure and applying it in an actual game in an actual game environment where there's many different factors going on, there's no true 1v1s, there's team play and peeling and all sorts of factors that can go into why you can't hit a shot, but a lot of it has to do with the movement and pressure aspect. And then lastly is consistency, and it's being able to take all these aspects and apply them to the game of Overwatch and through game after game, consistently being able to perform at a certain level without the high highs and lows. And consistency is something that you could actually control with practice, and I'm gonna break that down a little bit more later. The thing that you need to understand is in order to practice the first raw mechanical aim and muscle memory, things like playing against training bots and Kovac aim trainer can be very beneficial in building up that first initial muscle memory. Now, when you move on to the first section of why you can't hit shots, the movement section, you need to be introduced to different sorts of movement from yourself and from enemies. You're not going to be incentivized to move against bots and enemies aren't going to move against you sporadically up against bots because they're just bots, of course. So to practice against characters that are actually going to move against you, you need to be doing something like aim arena widow headshot or try hard free for all now specifically widow headshot and try hard free for all introduce you to pressure and that pressure means that you're going to be under pressure in order to hit shots it's going to put pressure on you as a player and that's something that you have to experience more than anything if you want to build up consistency which is what i talked about and then of course consistency also gets built up through application in game now i know some of this stuff might be complicated but i promise you if you watch this video to the end you will understand the big picture and you'll have everything you need in order to improve and eventually master Widowmaker. Now moving on to the next big topic we have to cover, it's positioning. 
And people often ask the question, should I flank, play behind a shield, off angle, what am I supposed to be doing on Widowmaker? So off angles and flanks are extremely powerful, especially in the ranked mode, because it's very easy to hit shots versus enemies that are not actively dodging. We talked about those easy to hit shots. If someone is actively dodging you, like they're looking directly at you and they're crouch spamming and moving left and right, if they have good movement, it is so difficult for you to headshot them. And body shots are still pretty difficult as well. Now, if an enemy is not paying attention to you at all, those are the consistently easy shots that you should be able to get off. And that's why flanking and off angling can get a lot of value as long as you don't throw away your life into the enemy. I'm gonna talk about that more later as well. Now, technically, yes, you could play behind your Rhine shield and put in front pressure, even go up against other widows. The problem is it can be unreliable. Tanks can often move their shields, shields can break and all sorts of things. So I wouldn't heavily suggest this that often at all. Now, something about flanking in particular is flanking is better against certain compositions. Compositions with dive characters, something like Monkey, Tracer, things like that. If you flank aggressively, then these characters can actively pursue you and kill you. Now, if the enemy doesn't have anything that can actually initiate onto you, let's say the enemy has Ryan Zarya, they have a McCree and a Mei. None of these characters can come and pursue you very easily, so you can take more aggressive flanks against this composition, and it might even be better. So understanding the risk you put yourself in when you take these risks flanks can allow you to decide for yourself if it's worth the value that it's going to bring. On top of this, the more confident and consistent you become at your mechanics through application, the more confident you will feel when going on these flanks and the more successful they will be. Now generally, if you do a flank and you have multiple enemies that don't identify where you are, they don't know where you are yet, so essentially you can hypothetically get a free kill here because no one's dodging you, no one even is aware of your presence, the character you should try to kill first is typically the threat. So for example, if there's like a Widow or a McCree, you hypothetically want to be killing the Widow first because she is the one that can threaten you. In a similar scenario, if there's an Ana or a Genji, you want to be killing the Genji first because he is the one that's going to threaten you. Now this is not true across the board, but this is the general use case for deciding what is the primary target when going on a flank because often if you kill the threat first, then the space is opened up and you can proceed to get multiple kills in a row because no one can actually shut you down or zone you away. Now I'm not going to get too much into maps in general for Widowmaker, but of course, of course, there are some maps that favor her, specifically maps that have really long sight lines. A general rule of thumb is you should always try to be using high ground on Widowmaker if possible because it gives you more avenues to transition through the high ground to the low ground and back up with your grapple hook. It can allow you to change the vertical space more than once, which makes it harder for some characters to chase you. Lastly, if all else fails, utilize your effective range on Widowmaker. Widowmaker has the longest effective range in the entire game, and this is incredibly important to Widow's power level in general. Being able to play very far away from the enemy allows you to put pressure into them without them being able to put equivalent pressure into you. A McCree that is far outside of his range might have to hit you five, six, seven times when you only have to hit him once in the head in order to end the matchup. And this is true for almost every matchup across the board outside of the Widow v Widow matchup, which I'm going to talk about how you specifically beat in a little bit. That being said, the general rule of thumb is really play into Widowmaker's strength, which is using your long effective range to your advantage, and you could do that by positioning yourself accordingly with really far sight lines. Now moving on to the next big topic in question is how to play versus dive. So you need to be heavily paying attention to the routing of enemies up against dive. When you're positioned, let's say you're positioned really far away like I normally suggest, you know, using your effective range like I talked about just before, you need to be trying to fish for kills during enemy transitions and rotate accordingly to them closing in. If you ever, and I mean ever, let a character with movement abilities get on top of you without using said movement abilities, then you have lost. I'm talking about a Genji that can get all the way up to you without using his dash, or a Winston that can get all the way on top of you without using his leap. This is a failure in positioning and a failure in awareness. You have a grapple hook, which is incredibly good for mobility, and if a Genji dashes onto you, you have a means to escape him. But if you let the Genji get on top of you, then you have to use your grapple hook to get away, and he still has a means. Do you see the difference here? This is incredibly important, and it's also also incredibly important for you to keep track of these divers because you could put pressure into them before they get in position to dive you. If a Genji has to route all the way up the stairs, through the high ground, on top of the ledge, right around the map, there's so many different windows of time for you to potentially kill him and there's ways to shut him down or position yourself to where he has longer to get to you and you have more opportunities to kill him. This is something that's true for Monkey, it's something that you could do put pressure into characters like D.Va. There's a lot of different things you could do against dive but you have to keep these things in mind 
line, it's incredibly important if you ever want to have a shot against dive compositions. Now moving on to the next big question that often gets asked, it's how to win the Widow 1v1. So the first thing that you need to do is learn the charge timing for Widow. It's 63% for a 200 HP hero, and it's 82% for a 250 HP hero. Now, the 250 HP hero is irrelevant because we're talking about the Widow 1v1, but this is important to learn, and I'm just gonna let you learn it right now, different charge amounts for different HP heroes. Now, you might be asking, why does it matter? Well, the thing is, if the enemy Widow and you Widow zoom in at the same time, but he doesn't fire until 65%, and you fire exactly at 63%, you're gonna kill him first. On top of that, if he fires at 50% and doesn't kill you, and you fire at 63%, you're going to be able to kill him before he has time to SMG you. So getting the timing perfect is the way that you give yourself a really good advantage in the direct head-to-head, -head, and it's something you need to practice. Now, we all miss shots, of course, and if you miss your charge shot, the next thing you need to immediately do up against a Widow is predict when that Widow is going to fire. You can do this by mentally keeping track of the enemy's charge counter because you hypothetically want to crouch about the time frame that you think he's going to fire so that he misses right above your head. And if he fires and misses, now he's on the back foot where he has to try to predict you when you're going to fire and he needs to crouch. So this is like a back and forth understanding with this matchup, and of course, both of you can disengage it every Every time but what I'd highly suggest is you go into widow free-for-all and you practice this immensely because you're gonna get a lot of practice out of this and some other tip I have for you do not try to move around too sporadically try to make it really difficult for yourself to hit a shot if you have the better mechanical aim and you're consistent you can just plant your feet and hit a shot consistently you don't need to be abusing the fact that headshots only are enabled or anything like that you need to be planting your feet trying to either one hit your shot or two crouch at the proper moment to dodge the enemy shot and that is all you need to do against a widow. Now, some other general rules of thumb is do not grapple if you know the widow is hard peeking where you're gonna grapple. This is really a very easy shot for a widow to hit. It goes right into the thing I talked about in the beginning where if you wanna be decent at widow, you have to be able to hit the easy shots consistently. Grapping right in front of a widow is those easy shots. The same thing applies to jumping in front of an enemy widow. Do not jump if the enemy widow hasn't fired and is looking directly at you. Typically, I would say don't jump in general, but there are some mix-ups where you can jump around the corner and quick peek. These are a little bit risky, but I know that they have a place in some Widow's arsenal. You just got to practice it. Now, lastly, if the enemy Widow is better than you, you need to try to learn from it. This is a good opportunity. You're going to run up against Widows that are better than you, but if you don't consistently try to go up against these Widows and beat these Widows, you're never going to be able to improve because every single Widow that you come across in ranked, eventually you're going to have to be able to at least contest if you want to climb past their rank. On top of that, if you really need some help pushing through against these Widows, try to get creative with some angles. Taking alternate angles and getting behind a Widow, you can snipe that Widow. Basically, you don't outskill him. You just flank him and get an angle on him where he dies without being able to challenge you. And then you just clean up the rest of the enemy team because you're uncontested. Now, moving on to the next big question that I'm sure everyone wants to know. How do I hit incredible shots? Now... I'm not talking about the easy to hit shots. I'm talking about the shots that are crazy. You know, the Carpe Saya player, Taimu, insane flick shots that literally just shut down a tracer that's behind you. You know, the 180 flying grapple headshots, the incredible shots. And I'm going to tell you exactly how you get to that point. The first thing is muscle memory. Practice the fundamentals, practice aiming and flicking, practice close range flicking, practice far away flicking. Do not just practice for shooting at longer ranges, practice incredibly close, practice flicking drills, practice in COVID back aim trainer there's so many different things that you need to learn muscle memory is a huge part of that because ultimately to hit a lot of these crazy shots you need to have a combination of tracking and flicking that becomes compounded over time to become these insane incredible shots that really can let you win matchups that you shouldn't have won and carry games that you shouldn't have been able to win at all the second thing that you need to understand if you want to start hitting these incredible shots is that it takes tons and tons of hours. You're not going to get there overnight, and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do if you want to get there as fast as possible at the end of the video. But for now, just realize that you're not going to wake up one morning and just be an insane Widowmaker that can 180 hit these tracers. That's never going to happen if you don't put the time and effort. And even then, it's not something that happens every single game, every single minute. It's something that you have the possibility of doing only if you put in the hard work and effort. Effort. Now, the next thing that will give you the chance to start hitting these incredible shots is believe that you can do it and try to go for it. I can't tell you how many times that I've dived a Widowmaker as Tracer and I've done like 70 damage to that Widow and she just stops moving. 
She thinks that there's no way in the world that she wins that matchup. And so she just takes her hand off the keyboard. She says, whatever, I've lost this matchup. If you don't at least try for the Hail Mary shots, if you don't at least try to completely outplay your enemies every single time, then what are you doing on Widow? You need to understand that as Widow, even if the shot is very unlikely to hit, if you do hit it, every single matchup with the Squishy is 100% winnable, even from close range. Widow has some of the highest peaks in the entire game if you can hit these shots. And if you don't even go for them, how are you going to learn how to hit them? How are you going to practice and hit them consistently if you never try in game? Now, lastly, of course, I got to suggest this. The number one way that you could start hitting incredible shots is by grinding try hard free for all, especially in addition to competitive. Now, the reason I suggest tried free for all is because what are the characters that are played in tried free for all? Tracers, Genjis, Doomfists, other Widowmakers, Hanzos, they're just flying at you all over the place. You're getting oversaturated with all of these characters just coming at you and killing you. And often when you're Widow in these lobbies, these characters just want to jump you. They just want to farm you because they want to be at the highest on the leaderboard. They want some free kills. But if you play Widow and you get good and practice against these characters, it's going to be abuse. I'm telling you, it's going to be abuse for a while but eventually you're gonna start hitting these shots that you didn't realize you could hit and you're gonna start improving rapidly and then in game all of a sudden you're gonna hit this insane 90 degree flick on a genji that's right in your face and this genji is gonna be like question mark question mark hacking hacking what the heck and you're not hacking you just put in the work and it shows and it pays off for you in game now this guide is pretty long and lengthy but i wanted to make it as in-depth as possible but before we get to even the most important part of the video when you should switch swap off widow and the biggest mistakes on widow i'm gonna need you to 360 snipe that like button and turn it blue for me please 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 i would greatly appreciate it now let's move on to the question when you should swap off as widow well yes widow can carry nearly every game if you hit enough shots you get enough value and xxx but there are a few examples in ranked that i think are simply a nightmare scenario even for the best widows in the game the first character in question is a Hammond in general if your team has no other forms of CC. If your other DPS is someone like a Genji and your support lineup is like Mercy Lucio, that Hammond is going to be completely uncontested. You can't reasonably headshot him and you could legitimately full power body shot him like over and over and over again and he won't die. He just rolls away to Omega and then he comes back on you. He has multiple forms of mobility. So unlike the examples with Genji and Winston where you wait for them to engage onto you with their abilities and then you grapple away, you can't do that with Hammond. Hammond can just keep moving. He can keep following you. He can chase you forever and his movement is perpetual so basically against Hammond if you don't have anyone on your team that can shut him down you can't off angle you can't play far back away from your team you basically have to play only right with your team which as a Widowmaker if you have to play exactly with your team your threat level to the enemy and your pick potential is severely limited and it's probably not worth playing Widow at all now, if you go up against a Hammond that's super annoying, you should definitely swap to a character that has similar mechanical characteristics, or at the very least, isn't going to greatly mess up your mechanics for Widowmaker. So I would suggest either a McCree or a Reaper as my two best suggestions. If you want to pick something that you can swap to that can shut down a Hammond, but you want to make sure that you don't really mess up your muscle memory or your aim in the moment, because it's better for you to play something with flicking capability in a similar mechanical ballpark as Widowmaker. Now, the next example of when you can swap off is against Hard Dive. Now, Hard Dive can be very difficult to play against sometimes, but against any character besides Hammond, you have counterplay. You could hypothetically win matchups against all the squishy divers. Doomfist, Genji, Tracer, Echo, even Winston and D.Va. D.Va's a little bit more difficult, but you can route accordingly. Winston in particular, if you time it right, you can hit a headshot during his transition, and you can hit a headshot as he's coming onto you. So there are counterplays there, but your positioning is what's going to matter most. You want to make it incredibly difficult for these characters to actually route to you in the first place. The big takeaway is this. You can definitely swap off if you're getting literal zero peel, but if you swap off every single time you get dove, then you're just going to be swapping off every single game you pop off. Because every time you get a 3k on Widow, what does the enemy do? They swap the hard dive. So if you always swap off, then when are you actually going to be playing Widow? And Widow is your best character. Widow is what you want to get good at. And I guarantee you that really good Widows can still make it work against all but the worst of dives. Now, the last matchup that I think is almost unbearable to play against in some situations is double sniper when you're not playing double sniper. 
Now, up against one Widow is enough of a threat because you have to play this mini game where it's Widow v. Widow, but against the Hanzo, it becomes even worse. First off, Hanzo's hitbox is incredibly difficult to shoot. I'm sure you already know that, but the fact that Hanzo has a Sonic Arrow means that he can give extra information to the enemy Widow, which means Sonic Arrows become double deadly, and then the fact that you're threatened from multiple angles, and then Hanzo can easily keep off angles in check, means that it's really difficult for you to push any off angle. This is a matchup that is very, very difficult to to beat and you should probably swap off against this matchup unless you're just way better than both their dps which could be a possibility if that's the case just snipe them both in the head now moving on to the last but probably most important section in the entire video is the biggest widow mistakes now these mistakes are mistakes that if you do not correct it can greatly hold you back from not only improving at widow but ever being successful at widow at all so let's jump into it and make sure that you have the foundation to be the best widow you can be so the first big mistake is assuming that you can truly improve on Widow when you play tons and tons of heroes. And I'm talking 10 plus heroes. The true thing you need to understand, and I repeat this in every single video I give, it's specialization. We talked about muscle memory. We talked about playing against divers and other Widowmakers. And we talked about aiming drills and application in game and all these things. Do you really think that you have enough time to practice all these things and play like five or 10 other heroes? Even if you do have enough time, because you play a ridiculous amount, if you put all your time into specifically Widow, you would be exponentially better at Widow because it compounds. It's like compound interest. You need to be specializing in Widow. If you want to become an insane Widow, you need to be putting as much hours as possible. That's what you see the Overwatch League players do. When Widow was meta, all of them played Widow in Ranked, they played Widow in Overwatch League, they grinded her non-stop, and they still do to make sure that if she ever becomes meta, they're ready to jump right on that train again. Consistency matters, specialization matters, and if you think you can improve without this, you are greatly mistaken. Now moving on to the biggest mistake number two, it's wanting results too quickly without putting in the work to improve. You're not going to become a god overnight. Every single Widow you go up against plays Widow consistently. And if you just want to all of a sudden just pick up Widow, play here for five hours, and then you could just click heads and carry, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to do that. The thing that you need to understand is popping off on Widow, becoming a hard carry Widow, being accused of aimbotting. These things are really satisfying. I'm not going to lie. They're immensely satisfying. But with everything that's satisfying, it takes work and effort. Because if it didn't, everyone could do it. Do you think everyone can pop off on Widow? No, because a lot of people aren't willing to put in the frustration. And I know what it's like when you start off on Widow. You miss easy shots, it feels very frustrating, and it's difficult to even feel like you're doing anything at all. People roast you in the chat box, people roast you in voice comms. No matter what you do, you just don't feel good when you start to learn this hero. But I promise you, when you pop off and get that 4k, when you carry your team, when you get called an aimbotter, when your teammates cheer you for being this true hard carry, it's all going to be worth it in the end. So please, don't feel like you need to get results that quickly feel like you need to work for it and you will feel satisfied in the end now the third big tip on widow is not valuing your life enough now this is true for every hero in general and it's a common mistake but for widow even more so Widows can turn fights that have no business being won at all. For example, if you stayed alive and value your life, all of a sudden, you can get a double kill on an on and a Genji, they had Nanoblade in their back pocket, and all of a sudden, a fight that really wouldn't have been winnable at all if that on a Genji stayed alive. Now they're dead, and you're up two people, now the fight is winnable. The things that Widow can do if you value your life and look for every single opportunity is crazy. The opportunities are literally endless. So never be quick to trade out or basically forgo your life for nothing. Now we're going to mistake number four, and this is thinking that Widow can be all aim and no brain. If you want my insight into this, I have met tons of mechanically gifted Widows that are ranked way lower than they would be if it was just a mechanical game. Even players like Shroud only place in plat or lower because they don't understand Overwatch as a game, and instead they only rely on the mechanical skill, which only will get you so far. Having complete alpha positioning with good mechanical skill will lead to some pop-off moments, I'm not gonna lie. But it also subjects you to these scenarios where you get killed or picked off for free and throw fights instead of being this consistently oppressive force. Now moving on to the fifth and final mistake. This might be the most important mistake on the entire list, it's ego. 
when you start improving at Widow, when you start popping off on Widow, even just playing Widow in your games, it's extremely easy to only take your perspective into account. You might pop off one game, you might get a couple of kills, and you feel like you've carried and you might have lost, but you know in your heart that it's your teammate's fault, right? The thing that you need to understand about Widow is you really need to own up to your mistakes. In fact, if you popped off and still lost, you need to be searching hard to find a mistake anyways. It doesn't matter if you got two kills, if you could have gotten three or four. It doesn't matter if you didn't get any peeling from your healers, if you had four opportunities to snipe the enemy Genji before he routed to you, but you couldn't hit the shots. Now I know this might seem incredibly harsh, but this is not my intent. The idea here is not to beat yourself up, but to constantly seek improvement because there's always more that you can improve on Widow. Ego is the quick road towards stagnation and ultimately will prevent you from becoming the best you you could have been. Anyways, that wraps up this video. I hope this guy has been extremely helpful for you. If you want to become overpowered, broken even, get raged at by your enemies because you're frankly just too good, then I got the perfect opportunity for you. Gameleap.com is 50% off in the links down below. You will never find an opportunity quite like this. Do yourself a favor, go check it out, and I'll see you there. If you like this video, do me a huge solid. Smash that like button because this is a very, very long video. It took me a long time to make, and I need to know if this is the type of content you want to see. I really want to make more advanced, high-quality content for the channel, but typically in the past, a lot of high-level advanced content hasn't done very well. So if you want to see a lot more of this content, smash the like button, subscribe, share this video, do everything you can so that I get the go-ahead to make way more advanced guys just like this one that really encompass the full picture for these heroes. Anyways, thank you so much for watching to the end. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time, 